we've seen some really horrific scenes in a Game of Thrones, like Ramsay Bolton torturing Theon Greyjoy, both physically and mentally, cutting away at him piece by piece until there's almost nothing left, and eventually he becomes a creature called Reek. We've also seen Princess Shireen being burned alive at a stake, a girl who was just nine years old, which was authorised by Stannis Baratheon and Melisandre to try and win a war. And her screams and her begging for her life are just chilling. We also have Jaime Lannister, who beats his own cousin to death with a metal chain in a bloody act to try and escape from being held prisoner. But how do House of the Dragon characters and scenes compare with Game of Thrones? Just how evil are House of the Dragon characters? Let's find out. At number 7, we have Otto Hightower. So, Otto is nowhere near as bad as the other characters on this list, but he still makes it. Anyway, around 6 months after Emma Targaryen dies, the king's wife, Otto is sitting in a room with his daughter, Alison. He tells her that she should comfort the king in his bedchambers, which Alison is clearly uncomfortable with. And at this point, she's just 14 years old, and the king is in his 40s. I know the books are different from the show, but in the show, he's in his 40s. And Alison dare not refuse the hand of the king, so... She goes. As she's leaving, Otto suggests that Alison should wear one of her mother's dresses, which is disturbing because Otto's wife had recently passed away as well, before Emma. So when you really think about it, Otto wants Alison to please the king like his wife pleased him. And he does this all for political power. At number 6, we have Aemon Targaryen. This takes place on a dark, cold, rainy night in Storm's End. Inside Lord Baratheon's audience room, Luke is just about to leave before Aemon stops him. He tells Luke to cut out his own eye. Either that, or he loses his own life. Obviously, Lord Baratheon didn't want any bloodshed in his hall, so Luke refuses and decides to leave. He gets on his dragon, Arax, and goes. Shortly after that, Aemon gets on his dragon, Vega, and he chases down Luke. At some point, Vega kills both Luke and Arax. Now, I know some people will say that Aemon didn't mean to do this because he's shocked by his reaction at the end, but you have to look at what he said before this happened. He clearly said that Luke either cuts out his own eye or he loses his own life. And then what happens? Luke loses his own life. Aemon killed his own nephew. Not because he had to, but because he could. At number five, we have Sir Kristen Cole. This takes place in the throne room at Rhaenyra and Lenor's engagement party. Things are fine for a while, but at some point, the night sours. Sir Criston begins to beat Joffrey. He beats him so hard for so long that he caves his face in, to the point where Joffrey is unrecognisable, and there's blood and pieces of Joffrey scattered all over the floor, in a horrific scene. What's really disturbing about this is that Sir Criston is a knight, and knights are supposed to protect people. His job is to make sure nobody gets hurt, but instead he beats Joffrey and he kills him. Sir Kristen Cole was a noble character, a character you admired and really respected, but now look what's become of him. He's become a monster. At number four we have the Crab Feeder. This takes place in the Stepstones, which are a bunch of violence between Westeros and Essos. So the crab feeder and his men intercept cargo ships and destroy them. Then they round up their survivors and take them to the shore. 
They nail their hands to the posts, weigh them on their backs, and literally feed them to thousands of crabs, each of them slowly picking away at their flesh, bit by bit, until they eventually die. We've seen a lot of deaths in a Game of Thrones, but this has to be the most painful and horrifying in the series. The crab feeder is a sick individual who loves to see people suffering and slowly eaten away at until they die. At number three, we have Aegon the Second Targaryen. This takes place in King's Landing, in Flea Bottom. Supposedly, there are illegal child fighting pits in King's Landing, and apparently, Aegon the Second visits these pits on the regular. The thing with these pits is that you have children around 10 years old who are purposely malnourished, have their teeth filed to sharp points, and their nails kept long so that they can fight each other to the death. What makes things even worse is that Aegon has a bastard son growing up in this environment, and he's chained to the walls. Now, Aegon's son is not old enough to fight yet, but Aegon is waiting for his son to become old enough so that he can fight other children to the death. Aegon is clearly a depraved individual, and he might just be the definition of evil. At number two, we have Lara Strong. This starts off in King's Landing. Lionel Strong, the hand of the king, wants to take his son, Harlan Strong, back to Harren Hall, so that he can start ruling. After hearing of this, Alison Hightower goes to see Lara Strong, and she basically tells him that Lionel shouldn't be allowed to resume his duties as Hand of the King, and Laris agrees. So after this, Laris goes down to the dungeons, picks out a handful of criminals, and he mutilates them, cutting out each of their tongues. After this, Laris commands these criminals to go to Harren Hall and burn down Lionel and Harwin Strong's key. Mind you, Lionel Strong and Harwin Strong are both Laris's own father and own brother. He wants to murder his own father and own brother, and he succeeds. These criminals burn both Lionel Strong and Harwin Strong alive, and their bodies are scorched, completely unrecognizable. After these events, Laris talks to Allison, and he tells her that what happened to his father and brother was an unfortunate accident, and that in time, She'll reward him. Laris did this all to gain favour with the Queen and to become Lord of Harren Hall. Laris Strong has to be one of the darkest characters in the series. At number one, we have Damon Targaryen. Damon has a whole list of offences, but there's one in particular that stands out. When Damon becomes commander of the City Watch, the first thing he does is he tells the watch that there are a bunch of hunting dogs and they're on the hunt. That particular night, the watch goes around and beats a bunch of people, men and women. Taking it a step further, some men and women are dismembered, having their hands and certain body parts cut off. Even further beyond that, some men and women have their heads cut off and they're executed. None of these people were actually put on trial. So for all we know, all of these people could have been innocent. We just don't know. Just from this example, we can see that Damon has little value for human life. He'll kill as many people as he wants for any reason. He's literally a beast in human skin and one of the most evil characters in the series.